Welcome back, everyone, for another On.NET show. Today, I have uh, Michael Millerud here to talk about App Insights and Codeless Attach. Join us. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, uh, we're here to speak to uh, Michael Millerud. Millerud, right? Yep, that's how you pronounce Go it. Go right. Uh, and we're talking about App Insights and Codeless Attach, which sounds amazing considering that App Insights is one of my favorite features. We we'll like that. We we'll like hearing that. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about App Insights first and then what you're here to talk about. So Application Insights has had quite a history. It's a product that's been around for a while. Yep. We started uh, in System Center, moved over to Visual Studio, okay. and then landed in Azure. And Azure has been tremendously great for us because we got in front of all of these customers um, mm -hmm. that had APM needs, yep. enterprise grade, and we've built out a native Azure APM solution. Okay. We still call this application insights, but it's part, part of a bigger offering called Azure Monitor. Yes. And that has log analytics and container insights, VM insights, VMSS insights. So we'll talk only about the APM portion today, but I can mm -hmm. also sort of allude to the other parts sure. for, for follow-up. Yeah. And the APM is, so APM is uh, application performance, performance management. Yeah. It, management. It, Management or monitoring, some people think it's monitoring, okay. <laughs> but uh, it's actually management. If you look at the uh, uh, Gartner Quadrant, okay, uh, it's it's a thing that they track year to year, and uh, okay. there's a number of players in the space. Every okay. cloud provider has its own. Yep, um, it's a necessity to monitor workloads. Absolutely. And the difference is that APM lets you see application layer telemetry mm -hmm. versus regular monitoring just uh, follows through with platform metrics, logs, that yes. kind of stuff. I think we have a screenshot. Uh, yeah, this is a really good example of uh, APM level telemetry because you can see request rates, yes. durations, failure rates, and this is happening within the process yep. versus out of proc collection that just shows you CPU memory and sort of resource utilization KPIs. Right. So I, I love application insights because without really any effort from the developer side of things, you can actually have richness of information about what's happening with your application, uh, at what level is it failing, or if it's failing. You know, yep. Some people have failures that don't even know about them. Yep. So and it, it also uses AI to surface things that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. So it's, it's a fantastic tool. But I think today you have something even more exciting than just that, right? Right. Which is the codeless attach. Codeless attach. Yes. So, so we, we've uh, talked about application size before. And last time, in the last episode, we showed uh, Visual Studio and Visual Studio code onboarding, where you yep. go into the code and you use wizards or you write mm -hmm. code. Um, there's another way, yep. right? And many people ask for that other way, and that's called codeless. Okay. I don't want to change my code. Mm -hmm. I cannot change my code. I don't even have source code access. Yep. Or I cannot redeploy because it's already out mm -hmm. and someone has to maintain this. Yep. And there you want to have an out of process attach gotcha. experience. Okay. Now that depends on where you run. Uh, so we have different solutions. And if, if, you, if you search our documentation, uh, there is both code based monitoring mm -hmm. for all these languages okay. that we support. Wow. And then, yeah, there, there's quite a few and it keeps growing. Nice. Um, and then there is codeless monitoring, and there'll be different um, experiences whether you go to do this on Azure VMs or VMSS, on app services, on cloud services, functions, etc. Right? Um, but you, you also do it off premises, right? So, so you can be on premises, on so you don't yeah. have to be on Azure to get the benefits of these tools. Correct. Right? Uh, Azure Monitor is a multi cloud solution, okay. and we love hybrid, yep. uh, which means if some of or most of your assets are still on prem and you're doing lift and shift, okay. and you want to monitor what the transition looks like, you can apply application insights right there and then, and then transition and do A-B comparisons um, as you go into Azure. And That's we'll support you in both places. It's great. Insights, no matter where you are. Correct. Brilliant. Yep. And um, do you have any demos to show us today on yep. how to use it yep. at all? So I can show you a couple of experiences. Okay. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is the uh, on-prem or actually any VM, multi-cloud, okay. you could be. Uh, in any cloud whatsoever of your choice, on a physical box as well, it doesn't matter, as long yep. as you have console access. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, I went and um, created, let me find this, I created a DevOps project, okay. uh, called it .NET Show Demo, <laughs> because that's what we're doing. Yep. And I told it go and, uh, and I, can, I can actually walk you through that experience of what that looks like. Okay. Um, let's start here. So. So if you haven't tried that before, it's mm -hmm. an awesome tool to go and quickly get started okay. in Azure because you can say, go and create, say, .NET application right? yes. or one of the other ones. Especially if I'm learning a new area, I always go th this route first because okay. it actually gets, gets me a working app. Perfect. Um, and then ASP.NET. Mm -hmm. And I would say, uh, put this on a virtual machine. 
Okay. And you can go this other number of routes. For instance, in functions, we own by default when you deploy a function. Any okay. function app, application and sizes there. Right. Uh, app service, same thing. Uh, you'll be able to opt in as part of the creation. Some yeah. of the work we've done uh, over the past year is being every computer P at creation. It's a monitoring tab at creation. I can show that as well if, if you want. But in this case, I will say basically go and uh, dot net show demo two. Mm -hmm. um, and you say where you want to create it. You say done. It's going to go off and do pretty much this. I'm going to see this uh, right. instance. I haven't touched the code. It just deployed a, uh, an app. App is very, very basic. Looks like this. Right? Sample app. Yep. Yeah, but you can interact with it. it it's actually a multi-page app. So mm -hmm. it has uh, requests that are being processed. It, I, I asked actually uh, this uh, DevOps project to also create a SQL okay. um, instance with it. And as a result, it will be making calls to SQL just sort of to, to get a view of what this looks like. Yeah. And you'll see that it went and created an application insights and it's part of the experience. So one of the things we've done with DevOps, partnering with DevDiv is everything you deploy through Azure DevOps, um, you will have application insights out of the box. Great. That gives you, g gives you monitoring of everything that's happening in your application, all the log analytics, all the metrics, uh, live streams like I showed you before. So some people may uh, think that a little bit too invasive. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I believe we can reassure them that it's beneficial to them and there's no real impact to the application, right? It is actually not invasive. Uh, we do not collect any PII. Yep. Uh, so let's, I guess, talk about what we do collect. Uh, we collect incoming requests, such as get home index, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll see what, what's being called. Yep. We'll show you how it failed or succeeded and how long it took to, com uh, to compute. Okay. And if you made calls outside through dependencies, we'll show you those as well. Right. And you'll see this uh, beautiful, um, so I can actually show you this. So you'll see, for instance, these kind of views. They are completely uh, DPI-eyed. There is nothing here personal about the customer, yeah. right? But you, you'll see your operations. You'll be able to zoom in on specific operations, uh, get a trend. Uh, this one is not interesting. This one is much more interesting because there's 4,600 of them. Uh, look at your 95% and say, oh my god, there's a spike. I should probably yes. investigate. Uh, focus on your long tail and say, well, let's actually look at my fourth percentile that is impactful to my business, yep. right? We get into the samples and uh, be able to very, very quickly find, um, this is actually it's running fine. It's, let me find another one that's slower. This is way too fast, 3.5 seconds. There's nothing to do there. Uh, let's Our code is working too good. Yes, especially sample code. <laughs> So, so this is the, the breakdown uh, okay. and the Gantt chart you'll, that you'll see is all of the telemetry that we collect, right? So right. it's, it's uh, requests, dependencies, exceptions happening inside, any uh, events uh, or traces that you will put in your code yourself and decide to share with the telemetry, right? Yeah. So for new deployments to Azure, we can, or DevOps, we can just use Azure DevOps mm -hmm. and it will instantiate an App Insights yes. um, version for us. And we'll do even more. It will give you CID, CD, CI, CD, CM, continuous monitoring, which means you can now gate your integrations and deployments based on APM telemetry. Right. So if my my latest code is not performing as well, yep. I can revert back to my you previous got it. one. That's perfect. Yep. But uh, as we said, not everyone can always deploy code and not everyone wants to touch their code or go and mess with their mm -hmm. production environment. So there's a codeless attachment, right? The, right. The ability to do something more without having to redeploy. Yeah, the, the, the lingo in the field is red field. Uh, okay. We call green field something where you just write new code, new yep. project. Uh, brown field where it's an existing piece of dirt code you have to deal with and you can yes. go and you change it. And red field, the server is on fire. There is no developers because they're on vacation or oof sick. Yeah. yeah. But you've got to do something, right? Exactly. Um, so it's, it's the red field experience. And so in this case, I did deploy this. And I, in this case, have a VM okay. that it created. I RDP into the VM. And we have an application running on the VM, which Correct. is a .NET application? Yep, it's yep. an ASP.NET, so it's under init, pub, WW root, the usual. Okay. And remember that I told you that it's instrumented with SDK already, so it's already running. Mm -hmm. But say you didn't know that. Yes, I didn't know that. And, you, <laughs> and, and, and the reason I'm telling you this is because it's a very common issue with the way people sometimes attach. Okay. Um, they will attach to existing applications that have been uh, instrumented, okay. and it wouldn't work for them, and they would figure out, why is it not working for me? Because everything seems to be succeeding. Right. It's because our codeless attach is a soft codeless attach, okay. which means uh, if SDK is already sending data, it will stand by ready. So if my application already has App Insights, yep and I try to do a codeless attachment, it will silently fail without really telling me why. 
It, sure. it won't fail. It will actually enable monitoring. Okay. Uh, and if you ever redeploy without the SDK, it will work and will send to the right place that you told it to send. Okay. But it's not going to override. Ah, SDK right. always takes precedence because gotcha. we think what's ever in the code that developers deployed uh, so the, takes precedence. So the, the ideal scenario for the red um, cases, I have some applications running on the VM uh, on the cloud and I want to go and check the monitoring and or enable some monitoring, but yes. I don't want to deploy any code and it doesn't have any instrumentation. Right. So this is the example here, right? Correct. This Perfect. is the example. Yes. Is uh, you're going to use uh, AZ application monitor and it's a PowerShell from the gallery. Okay. So very very easy to get. Um, you'll pull that, install the module, and it'll just say enable application insights monitoring and provide instrumentation key. Uh -huh. uh, that, that's basically a GUID. It's yep. a GUID that we use at ingestion to know which bucket of analytics uh, workspace to put things in okay. so that we can then build all this beautiful experience on top. Great. So and treat it just as, as an ID. Right. Yep. Yep. And that enables continuous streaming afterwards, so everything that As soon as you in. do this, yeah. assuming SDK hasn't been already put in, this mm -hmm. is where you onboard. So it's going to uh, do its thing. I've actually run this a couple of times, verbose, non-verbose. Okay. Um, in the end, what you get to see is, is it's enabled. So it will say, successfully enable application inside status monitor. Uh -huh. uh, status monitor is kind of a uh, historical term. It okay. neither provides status, no monitors anything, it's not an agent. <laughs> and when we rename this, if you look at the documentation page, um, we now call this, um, let me get this right, application insights agent, Okay. this one. And it's not an agent really. Uh, what it does is that we call this today in-process agent, IPA. Okay. Um, and we're doing this across all languages, not just .NET. Right. Uh, basically, the premise is that it's an executable, PowerShell or something else, right? Depending yep. on, on the OS, where uh, you will, out of the process, inject SDK, if necessary, into the process okay. and stand by, right? And, and if the developers haven't changed anything, it will start streaming data, okay. which is great for ops, DevOps, uh, anyone who is trying to uh, do DRI rotation on a module that doesn't have a monitoring okay. solution in place. Brilliant. So. Very uninvasive. We just go in, tap yep. it, and happens. Yep. And, and you can disable it afterwards if you don't want to anymore. Yeah. And once you're on the command, you don't have to do anything else, right? So it injects the SDKs to your app, and then Correct. you're done. Yep. And then if, if you want to see what you are monitoring, you can do get application insights monitoring status. Ah. That will show you the apps running. Because this uh, this command is actually smart. If you, if you go in documentation, mm -hmm. by default, single IKEY right. will only get you, where is it? Enable application insights monitoring will only get you all of your apps sent into the same place. But maybe you want different apps sent into different places. Yes, right? yes. It's a common thing to share compute across apps. Sure. So you can totally do that. You can say, this app goes to this IKEA, that app oh. goes to that IKEA. And everything else, sort of else statement goes to this other IKEA. So we used to have a, an executable for VMs that you could install to the VM to do Azure attachment. Is that a replacement for that tool that it was like, it would look at your IIS and say, hey, you got all these processes running. That's exactly how this works. It's actually uh, IS level attached. The right. previous version was higher level SP.NET. Okay. It wasn't as reliable. Okay. This means if I enable this and someone deploys an app that is not SDK instrumented, you'll start seeing the telemetry. Right. So it's always good to have it. Understood. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I did have a question. We talked about .NET, yep. but we haven't touched .NET Core. Mm -hmm. And we talked about VMs, but we haven't talked about like that, that was a Windows VM. And we haven't this this about. is a uh, it's a Windows VM, but uh, I did show you more of an on-prem experience. I okay. can also show you what the Azure experience looks like. We also did yes. VM um, VMSS. It's in the yeah. documentation. But so today you have to go to extensions. Okay. Which is reminding me of the way we used to do this. Um, Back in the day, the virtual machines. Back in the day when I just started driving Attach with Azure, when we just came to Azure. Yep. I, I came to App Services and they said, yeah, just go write an extension. Yep. And we did, and discoverability was horrible. So right, right now, discoverability is not the best in this, but it's okay. gonna get better. So if you go to extensions in the VMs and you say add, mm -hmm. it's always sort of the, the battle to prove yourself before uh, a big RP takes you in yep. as a uh, native experience. So we've done that for functions with other App Services, mm -hmm. AKS. Um, and you find here below, you got a load more. Yep. You find application size agent. Yes. Uh, this will walk you through the same experience that I just showed you okay. without PowerShell. Ah. Because we have a VM extension that does the same exact IPA injection. So multiple ways to enable uh, APIM. Correct. It basically specify an IKEA or what we call connection string, mm -hmm. which is uh, a string that includes IKEA plus potentially other things like overrides. We use okay. this for um, network isolated environments like ASC, mm -hmm. uh, private link in Azure. Yeah. Um, we use this for sovereign clouds if you have to work in sort of contained environments. And uh, what's on the roadmap for us? Like, 
the serverless attached, you guys have any, sorry, not serverless attached, it was the codeless, codeless, codeless attached. Codeless attached. Uh, going into more and more RPs inside okay. Azure. Uh, today, if you go, for instance, and you create a new uh, web app, right? Yeah. Uh, or function app, you will see a monitoring tab here. Understood. And this will be yes or no. Mm -hmm. I actually have to go and uh, uh, specify some parameters here for it to, um, yep. to do something useful. Uh, so if I say windows.net, where's my .net? Did I say Linux? Well, I guess let's do .net core, doesn't matter. Um, and I go to monitoring. Yeah. No, this needs to be on. Uh, not 3.1, uh, let's do 2.1. Yes. So for specific supported uh, runtimes, it's on by default. Okay. For others, it's opt-in. And nice. we're working on making it on by default for all, so that when you create a new experience, not just in the Azure DevOps, but also in um, Azure Portal, yeah. APM starts flowing. And by the way, 5GB is free for you per subscription per region. So you're actually not paying anything to get all that value. Free. You hear that? That is quite a lot of telemetry 5GB. Yeah, it so. is. Well, I think that was uh, fantastic. I love the I love the fact that we give developers and IT ops people more options to mm -hmm. start monitoring. So you don't always have to write code if you need to start monitoring today, but you should be monitoring. That's that's the that's the end goal, right? So make sure you monitoring your applications uh, with one of the ten ways we described today. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, Michael for uh, coming with us today. Uh, and to show us the new stuff that are uh, in place. Sure. Call and us again. We'll show you more. Absolutely. We'll do it more. Thank you. Thank you.